everyone, welcome to Connection Points. Pastor Dennis with you, and we're going to continue our study here in Acts chapter 9. And we've been just kind of stepping through one uh, section at a time and uh, talking about the Apostle Paul and his uh, conversion, his moment when he met Jesus on the Damascus Road and when he went into Damascus and, and Ananias um, prayed for him. He received his sight, he was baptized. He was sent out and then he began to preach and teach in the synagogues and live into the destiny that he had, uh, the, the, the plan that God had prepared him for and led him to. And so in verse 26, it picks up and it says, When he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. Because remember, Saul was a Pharisee and he had a license, he had um, authority from the high priest to go and to really to destroy the church, to, um, to arrest and even kill those who were uh, claiming the name of Christ and, and for living into this. And, and so when he came to the disciples, they thought it was a trap. They thought he was trying to trick them or, or something like that. In verse 27, though, we see a new person uh, that comes in. It says, but uh, Barnabas took him and brought him to the uh, brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul, on his journey, had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved uh, and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly. In the name of the Lord, he talked, uh, he talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. So th there's a lot in here. Uh, Barnabas, remember, we talked about him earlier, uh, I believe in chapter 4, where he had sold a piece of property and brought his, the proceeds uh, to it, and he was referred to there as the son of encouragement. Um, that's why they called him Barnabas. His real name was Joseph. They called him Barnabas because he's a son of encouragement. And here he's encouraging uh, Paul. He's he's bringing he's being a friend to him, and and he's bringing him to the the apostles and saying, "Listen, th let me vouch for this guy. Let me let me be a friend to him. Let me encourage him and encourage you to receive him." And, and so. Uh, they, because of that, then Paul is able to continue his ministry there in Jerusalem to move about freely, to do what he's doing, and, and because he's putting up a fight against the Hellenistic Jews, in other words, the Jews that had been indoctrinated into the Greek culture, um, that's what Hellenistic means, they started to press against him. They started to carry out, try to carry out what he had tried to carry out before, which is stop this movement. Let's shut it down. So they start trying to kill him. And once again, Saul has to, or Paul has to uh, escape from a city. And so he escapes from Jerusalem and they, and they put him on a boat and they send him to Tarshish. Um, well, let's see, when, it, when the believers uh, learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. I'm not sure if it was on a boat or not. Uh, maybe I just made that part up. But back to Tarsus is where he's from. He, he actually lived there. That was, uh, that, was where, that was his hometown. And so they're sending him back home. In verse 31, it says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galatia, I'm, I'm sorry, the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened, living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it increased in numbers. So the church begins to grow. The, the church begins to expand uh, as, as more and more people share the love of God and the grace of God. You see, many times when we talk about the gospel, I think a lot of times we think about the gospel from an argumentative standpoint that that we have to 
argue people into the kingdom or that we have to put up a fight. But the truth is, the more that we just live in the love and grace of God and show that to other people, it becomes attractive. And, and there's, a, there's a grace on that. There's an attractiveness to that that people are drawn to. And, and I believe that that's what's happening here is that the believers are just experiencing the presence of God and experiencing the grace that that they have in him and and because of that the they are greatly encouraged and they're encouraged by the Holy Spirit in other words the, the Holy Spirit is filling them full of courage and when courage comes in fear goes out and so he's replacing their fear with faith and that's what the Holy Spirit does and when that begins to happen the church begins to increase in number. And, and so it, it, more people come to know the love of God. And that's really what the gospel is. The gospel is the love of God come to life in a person named Jesus Christ. And that's, that's what we get to share with the world. So I want to pray for you. I just pray, Lord, that you would help each one of us to be an encourager, to be a friend to another, to be an ally to those who are spreading the gospel, just like Barnabas was to Paul. We ask, Lord, that you would give us that boldness and give us that opportunity to live out your love and grace in the world so that, so that everyone around us could be lifted up and encouraged and drawn to you as, as your love becomes attractive to them. And, and we will be ready in in season and out of season to give a reason for the hope that we have because the, our hope is in Jesus whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here today. Have a great one.